Hey everyone, don't mind me, and this is probably going to be the worst video I have ever done. I look like crap, I forgot my microphone, but you guys loved when we did the episode at the beach of Tips on Sunglasses. Now I'm in a different kind of situation, and well, incidentally, some of the same rules apply, but not really. But this is the most freaking durable and versatile pair I have. So let's talk about some things you should probably be doing, or at least some things you should pay attention to for sunglasses in extreme heat and a lot of reflective light, because this stuff, it's intense. I gotta say, this may be one of the very few times I've been like, oh, yeah, that polarization is nice. Oh, let's talk about it. So, first of all, and maybe you don't care, I'm here for an optical trade show, or at least I was the rest of this week, which is why I sound extra gravelly. Vegas is interesting on the throat. And the, over, yeah, somewhere over there, you can see the space needle thingy that I didn't get to check out. I ran out of time on this trip. It's unreal. And, and we'll throw a few videos up of some of the things I stumbled across there. If you can drill over that, it's not necessarily right in this video, but come on, you're here for fun anyways. Hello. Hey, what's that? Is that your one o'clock? Hmm? Was that your one o'clock? In rainbow color frame. Now, on to what you actually probably clicked on this video for, maybe. Or you just like me. Uh, probably not that one. I, yeah. This thing, this freaking incredible, hot, blinding sun. What do you do with this when you have all of this around it's dry as crap nobody warned me how dry it is and how important it is to drink extra water where we are there's moisture in the air <laughs> that sounds simple okay that sounds logical that sounds simple and we'll get into that and it does relate to the sunglasses okay but not yet but there's nothing the only moisture you're getting is actually drinking. Now I say that there is a little, little something right here, but it's just not. <laughs> it's not enough. I'm somewhat comfortable here, and this may be a new thing. Now, as far as actual sunglasses I'm picking, you see, I have got the Varney Glacier 1315. If you are familiar with sunglasses, if you're familiar with Varney at all, you know exactly what these are. You've run into them before. You've seen me talk about them before, and I'll link a couple of those videos here. This is one thing I can never fault Varnay on. The Glacier is really, really, really freaking good. It is intended for adventuring, so obviously when I'm doing videos out in other places, it just makes sense that that's what I've got on because it's what it was built for. Harsh conditions like salt water, like no water <laughs> apparently that's the other side of that coin so in this kind of situation it's almost like the snow banks very similar to the arctic glaciers in that you have a lot of very bright reflective surface out here and as i mentioned in this case you don't really need that increased depth perception as much as you need the blocking of that blinding reflected glare from below and the mirrors do somewhat help with that and you can you know balance the trade-offs in the snow whether you need more of the depth perception or whether you need more of the blocking of the reflected glare in this case i can't imagine many situations where you would want the enhanced depth perception the tiny loss of depth perception from polarized to be more specific and accurate about it versus blocking all of all of that down there no, it's bad, especially up from this angle where polarization really does its best work. If you're up higher and you've got more down below, it does a really good job. 
Now, I don't intend to ramble on about polarization for one minute, but you guys, you don't love that I don't love polarization. So there you go. I found a place that I do love polarization. You can throw hammers and darts and whatever else at me if you like. It's one situation. It's one time. I still don't love it for other things, but there you go. Now, as far as to what to actually do, plan for, think ahead with the sunglasses, you might have noticed already, again, if you're familiar with the glaciers, they come with side shields on them. I left those out at the beach many moons ago because salt water is extremely bad for suede, and this particular model has the suede inserts. I didn't bother to order the leather or anything else to have that on hand in time but that's kind of what I want to focus on here. You should be aware of the materials your frames are made out of. Leathers in particular are going to dry out really quickly in this kind of situation, so you need to be conscious of that. Make sure it's properly moisturized, just like you would seats on a car. We all know dashboards crack, leather fails. You know, you have to treat it and condition it properly. It's the same thing for anything you wear, whether it's going to be shoes, a jacket, or something on your glasses. Titaniums, again, are kind of the king when it comes to this versatility and power for being freaking abused in insane conditions. That's why the glacier is made from titanium. And this is not the junk, flexy titanium alloys that they tell you are titanium that are... Mm, titanium. This is the real deal. Heavy, well, not heavy, heavy duty. Heavy duty is accurate. It's fairly thick, it's robust. You're not gonna just bend this unless you really freaking intend to. And I hate working on titanium in that regard, but that's a whole other story. But you travel a lot, you adventure a lot, it works great. You don't have to worry about too much because it just takes whatever you can throw at it. Obviously, if it's colored titanium, you don't wanna throw too much at it because you can chip the paint off depending on the way it's coated and how deep that coating actually is. Just like if you have plated glass layers, like, God, this video is gonna be especially hard, but this is another point I wanna make. My phone is solid black. It is roasting my hand because I was an idiot and I didn't bring anything else out here. I literally just was like, hey, we should do this video about this desert type conditions here. And I am standing in the bright sun. It doesn't feel terrible to me because again, no moisture, but my hand over here holding this black phone is dying. So this is a situation where just like the materials, you want to avoid those really heavy, dark, black, thick metal. Did I mention this was hot? Frames, metal, titanium, fine. Titanium dissipates, dissipates heat quickly. Aluminum dissipates heat quickly but it is a little bit more prone to dinging and damage, so you do have to be aware of that. Now, in this particular situation, there's not a lot of dust and dirt being picked up in the air, so they don't have to worry as much about the cleaning techniques like we do at the beach in particular, because that salt water is incredibly corrosive. It's all in the air, so you know, the titanium itself isn't so bad. The screws, where they go into them, the barrels, all that stuff is a little bit more concerning. The glass lenses, this is a biggie in this kind of heat, okay? The plastic, the polycarbonate in particular, if you're in this extreme heat, it's 100 degrees, it doesn't feel that bad. I'm in a black, oh, green, that's green. That's a green t-shirt. I did at least make one smart move today. My shoes are black. But shirt is green and it's cool and stuff, so that's okay, but it is getting a little bit warm. <sighs> I'm rambling, I'm sorry. I haven't had enough caffeine. Late night. I'm sorry. We'll finish this here. I was in the middle of explaining how incredibly hot it is and that the phone was burning my hand. And it shut down and said heat protection has shut down your phone. There you go. <laughs> don't, uh, don't pick black metal sunglasses. We can do that. How do you think that's going to feel right here and all the heat here and it's everything. <laughs> uh, bright light colors. 
just like you would choose for clothes, the sunglasses need to be in that same tone. Obviously, I said I'm in a little bit darker shirt, but it works. So outside of that, the bigger thing to be aware of is the lenses because heat can actually graze and ruin the lenses. I think I had alluded to that earlier, particularly some of the more low-end plastics are going to be very prone to that. It's definitely something you have to be careful of. Crazing is essentially what happens where the coatings are ruined on the lens and you just see wavy lines over every bright line. Now, sunglasses are a little bit more prone to it anyway because often the mirror coatings are not a lot, 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 lot of the mirror coatings out there are not thermal cured or they're certainly not index matched to reduce the odds of that happening. Glass is a little bit less prone to it because the material itself doesn't really expand and contract quite as much in <laughs> really hot weather. Yeah. Mm. Let's go cool off somewhere that's not in a car. So, on that note, let me know what you thought of this video. If you want to see more of this kind of thing or more of the other more techy type stuff. For now, I need to drink some more water, get some sleep, and get ready for this late night flight. Back up. Which I will sleep for a week. <laughs> I'll see you guys next time.